morning everyone in today's lesson we're going to continue on with the geometry specifically about a shape called triangle now triangle as a shape for you is nothing new you've done it multiple times in your primary school years uh, considering mathematics you learn different types considering by angles and by sides so today we're just going to go through the naming of them one more time now of course in english how do we uh, how do we also name specific parts of them, how do we point them out, and some formulas that are going to be applicable for all triangles going forward. So let's start from the triangle itself. First of all, this is a shape consisted of three, uh, three segments that are connected by uh, the endings, or it is part of the plane uh, between three segments that are connected with one another. So <clears throat> now a couple of things considering the triangle itself and naming inside of the triangle and parts of the triangle. Let's start with the obvious part. It's the endings of the segments, which in mathematics or in geometry are go go called points, but specifically considering the shapes because they are the endings, so to say, are going to be called vertices. And these vertices are usually named al alphabetically starting with letter A onwards. So A, B, C. Now, one thing to point out again, when we are naming stuff alphabetically, specifically for the shapes, like with the angles, we have to watch out that we name it anti-clockwise, always anti-clockwise. Let's not forget about that. It's important. And name of this triangle is going to be triangle A, B, C. So this is going to be its name. Now, <clears throat> the vertices A, B, and C, they tell us a couple of things. They, I, I, I wouldn't say they tell us. They, they, they are just pointers to, so we can orient ourselves within a triangle and stuff on it. So first thing about the orientation now. Now we can also name the segments. Now, first of all, one more thing considering the shapes. In when we talk about shapes, these segments are not just going to be called segments, they are going to be called sides. So this is also something to watch out for. So we now have side AB, side BC, and side AC or CA. So <clears throat> how do we usually name them? Well, we usually name them using the small letters of the alphabet. So and the way that opposite the vertex, vertex A is going to be side a. Opposite vertex B is going to be side B, and opposite vertex C is going to be side C. Now, of course, these are not just the names of these sides. There are also going to be the measures or the lengths, lengths of each side. So, A is going to be length of side BC, actually. B is going to be length of side AC, and C is going to be the length of side AB. So usually we are going to have it uh, have uh, centimeters, millimeters, decimeters, etc. yards. So we know where to put it. So this is one part. Now there is another part that you can also look within a triangle, and this is the angles themselves. Now what is the name of a the, 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 why is the name of a triangle triangle? Because this means we have three angles and there are three angles in this here shape geometric shape so <clears throat> we can also point them out for for angles like in the angle part of the lecture we actually talk we actually use greek letters so in vertex a the angle is going to be called alpha in vertex b is going to be beta and in vertex c is going to be gamma so these are usual letters that we use, or symbols. Now, one more thing, considering these alpha, beta, and gamma. I'm going to write it down here. Alpha, beta, and gamma. These are specific angles, and they are interior angles. And there is something about them. We, we know something about them. 
If I would sum them up, or sum of these three angles all together, so alpha plus beta plus gamma, is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So this is the first measure in all of this that we can actually say. Meanwhile, we're going to talk some stuff about the 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 uh, the, the 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 lengths of sides, etc. More about it later. Now I want to point out something more, something more that is specific to every shape, and that is the. We can also look at other angles, not just interior three. There are also exterior angles. Now let me show you what exterior angle is or means. Now exterior angle is, for example, in vertex B, this here angle. Now in vertex C is going to be this here angle. And in vertex A is going to be this here angle. Now why did I why did I uh, draw them differently in a sense like I used one, two or three curves? Now why I use it because these three angles don't have to be equal, but there is something about them. There is something about them. If I sum them up together, look what's going to happen. If I start from here, I will turn towards here, I'm going to get up here, turn towards A, get into the A, and turn towards B back and get in the same position at the beginning. So what did we, what actually happened here? I did so to say a full circle, or in angle terms, 360 degrees. So these exterior angles, so these three are going to be exterior, They sum up to 360 degrees. And this is something that is going to be equal to 360 degrees for any geometric two-dimensional shape. So watch out for that in the future. Now, this was considering the angles themselves. Now, let's go back to the sides. Let's go back to some properties. Now, there are a couple of things that we can measure for each triangle. And one of them is perimeter. What is a perimeter? Perimeter is sum of all sides of a shape. In this here case, perimeter O is equal to A plus B plus C. And this is usually for triangle. Also, we can measure area because triangle is part of the area between three segments that are connected. Okay, so considering the area, now we have to introduce something something else. Now, it's not enough just to have the sides. There are formulas using only sides, but more about them in upcoming lessons. In the meantime, there is one common and most commonly used, and this is using, so to say, height. This is going to be height C, for example. Height is a segment that is that starts from the vertex, goes to the opposite side, and it is perpendicular to its side. So this is actually the height of the triangle. There are altogether three heights, and whichever we use and its corresponding side with it, we can measure area. Area is going to be, in this here case, C times height of C over 2. Now we can also use A, so A times height of A over 2, or B times height of B over 2. So whichever combination we use is going to be okay. Now, all these things that I've written so far, the sum of exterior, the sum of interior angles, a perimeter and area, is something that we can apply for any given triangle. So this is common for all of them. Now let's go and talk about specific types of triangles. Now we can look at the look at the types by angle and look at the types by sides. Now if I look at the angles themselves, the first here that I've drawn consists of three acute angles. So all three of them are acute. So this here means is that this here triangle is going to be called acute triangle. A 
but cute. All three sides are, or sorry, all three uh, angles are acute. In the second one, I already pointed it out, we are working with one right angle. Just so you know, in a triangle, there can be only one right angle. Now, if it has one right angle, the rest two are going to be acute. And this is going to be called right angle triangle. Right angle triangle has some specific properties and some specific things that we have to watch out. First of all, the, 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 the side that is opposite to the 90 degrees angle is called hypotenuse. While in some of the textbooks, the other two sides might be called legs, but I'm going to reserve the, the, the term legs for something else. So we are just going to use other two sides. But if you run, if you run up and see, uh, see that they're called legs, it's perfectly fine. Now, this type of triangle is going to be our our main subject in upcoming lessons, not yet, in upcoming lessons is going to be the main subject, and we're going to learn something specific about a right angle triangle that we are going to be able to apply next year to any triangle, and in your third year, we're going to be able to apply it not just in the sense of, of geometry. We are going to be able to apply it outside of it, but more about it, more about it in upcoming years. <clears throat> now, there are also some specifics, some more specifics about right angle triangle. I'm not going to dwell into them. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to point out is the area of it. It's a little bit different. It is going to be A times B over 2. Well, what is A? What is B? A is going to be one side and B is going to be other side next to the next to the uh, right angle. Why? We can use A and B. Well, simple enough, we either can make a rectangle out of it, and area of a rectangle is A times B, and now this is going to be half of it. Or we can say that, for example, B side is actually height of side A, or side A is height of side B. Why? Because they are perpendicular to one another. So there are two explanations why. And last, last, last triangle in this here uh, part is going to be made out of one obtuse angle. So if it consists of one obtuse angle, other two have to be acute, but we have that one specific guy, and we're going to call this obtuse triangle. Now, looking at the other type or types by sides, we can look again in three situations. Three situations are, the first one is going to be simple enough. All three sides are different. I'm going to just point it out so you know that this is actually with three different sides. Let's say this is A, B, and C. So this is going to be length side uh, A, B, and C. They are all different to one another. And this triangle is going to be called scalene triangle. Scalene triangle. <clears throat> Let's continue on. The next one I have pointed out here consists of two sides that are equal in length or same length. So if I want to point it out now, things change a little bit considering the naming of stuff. Now, first of all, there is a third side that is uh, that is not doesn't have to be, it might be, but it doesn't have to be equal to the other two. So this third side is going to be called base. And we are going to name it usually with A. It is the base. Meantime, other two are equal to one another, so they are going to be called legs. 
they're going to be called legs. So this is why I'm telling you, and I, I said I'm going to use it here for this type of a, of a triangle. So if a triangle consists of one side that is not equal to the other two, meantime other two are equal in length to one another, <clears throat> this type of a triangle is going to be called isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle. It has its own specifics, more about them when we get to the tasks where we have to work with them. Until then, we don't have to worry about it, except its name, isosceles triangle. This isosceles means two legs or two sides are equal in length. And if I look at the last one, last triangle that is given here, what I've pointed out is that all three sides are equal to one another <clears throat> in length. So what I can do the following here, A, B, C. Now all of these sides are going to be called A, A, A. They are equal in length. So it's similar situation to isosceles triangle, meaning that two sides are equal to one another. Now the base is also going to be equal to the other two legs. So to say we can also call them legs. This means everything is equal. All the sides are equal. And this type of triangle is going to be called equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. Now there is more things that are equal within. First of all, in the isosceles triangle, looking at the angles themselves, the angles that are next to the base are going to be equal in measure. Meantime, the third one doesn't have to be. For the equilateral triangle, considering the angles, well, not just the sides are equal in length. All the angles are equal in length and are all going to be alpha. There is one more specific considering the equilateral triangle, and that is that the angles are not just that they are equal, we know their measure because they are three times the 180 degrees altogether. So one of them is going to be 60 degrees. Now, all, the, all further specifics that are going to consider this for the specific type of a triangle, we're going to delve into those once we get into the tasks with themselves, and then we're going to go and talk about specifics. This is just the general terming. I hope you know in Croatian which of these means, and I would like you to translate yourself into the Croatian terms. I'm not going to do it now. And yeah, see you next time.